Somebody's left in the world. All right, time for us to get started tonight. If you would take out your blue song books, turn to 138. 138, we're going to have our monthly sing song service tonight. And uh, I've asked Brother Alvy to lead our opening prayer. And um, Brother Ken, I'd like to ask you to lead the closing prayer at the appropriate time, if that's okay. And Brother George will have our invitation. I'm getting back to it. Number 138. After this song, we'll have our opening prayer. Uh, Brother Al be leaving. Get my pitch pipe out here. <clears throat> Number 138, the army of our Lord. O men of age, O men of youth, lift up your idle swords. Come fight with us who fight for truth, the army of our Lord. Our Lord sees us. In the red book, let's turn to number 245. 245.
tell you what, I apologize. I keep a thumb in there. If you want to mark the invitation song tonight, it's 368. 368. Should have said that one first. Number 368. And we're going to sing now number 245. 245. After this song, we can start up here with Ken and go back and uh, from the back forward, if that's okay. Keep in mind, we're looking at two songs each uh, for each uh, song leader. And if we just come back around to uh, Ken, we'll just try to start again with one song after that. So, 245. Mm -hmm. To Canaan's land, I'm on my where the soul never dies My darkest night will turn to day Where the soul never dies No sad farewells No tear can dies Where all is love And the soul Is that the first note or is that G? It's the G. Uh, oh, okay. okay. It should be here, but I can't read it. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah. From the heavens, praise his name. Praise Jehovah in the highest. All his angels. Thank you. 
Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all the Number 234, the sands of time. <coughs> Sing all three stanzas. <coughs> the sands of time are sinking, the dawn of heaven breaks, the summer morn I sun for the Okay, it's not, I'm sorry. My bad. Okay, I'm sorry. Second verse. Oh, Christ, he is the fountain, the deep sweet well of love, the streams of earth I've tasted more deep of drink of More joy in this service, more 
and its glory share just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land. Just over, over in the glory land. There several places marked have to be careful. Number 244 over the sunset sea. <clears throat> 244 Darkness is falling the night quiet night Shadows will park on the lead Voices of saved ones are beckoning come over the sunset sea. Soon I shall journey to heaven, my home, and from all sorrow be free. Harbor lies gleaming, dark lighting the way over the sunset sea. Oh, 
that song. <laughs> Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all your lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. <clears throat> know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth all generations. Psalm 105. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works, glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength, Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O oh, you seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give you the land of Canaan, the law of your inheritance. When there were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong, yea, he reproved kings for their sakes saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. 
Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He broke the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance. To bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal subtly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They showed his signs among them and wonders in all the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of their kings. He spake, and there came to the diverse sorts of flies and lice in all their coasts. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines also and their fig trees and break the trees of their coasts. He spake and the locusts came and caterpillars and that without number. And he did eat up all the herbs in the land and devoured the fruit of their ground. He smote also all the firstborn in their land, the chief of all their strength. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. <sighs> Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light in the night. The people asked, and he brought quails and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and the waters gushed out, and they ran in the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham his servant. And he brought forth his people with joy and his chosen with gladness. And he gave them the lands of the heathen, and they inherited the labor of the people, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise you, the Lord. In your supplemental book, turn to number 70. I'm satisfied with just the cottage below a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one, that silver line. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we will never more wander, but walk the streets that are pure as gold. Don't think me Thank 
nation sword. Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me in the end. Where turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6. We'll be reading from there tonight. One of my favorite uh, passages, uh, set of passages, I should say, which is really relevant for I think everybody here. This country is so blessed with material goods yes. and they have a tendency to blind us. And uh, well, I gotta find that I got a note that I had that I'm gonna get out first. It has to do with uh, the desire for earthly gain that some people have a tendency to long for. In, chapter, in verse 5 of chapter 6, it talks, uh, it makes a, a point about uh, uh, about false teachers and their desires of what they're really aiming for. In verse 5, it says, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, so only uh, so, <clears throat> supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Mm -hmm. It's just as pertinent today as it 
was then. And uh, I'll give you some statistics on a particular individual. I won't say his name, but you probably figure out who it is. This individual, he's a Pentecostalist. I guess that's the way to pronounce it. He, he, he preaches about good things. He, he doesn't like to talk about sin. But he wants to talk about uh, the good things, uh, uh, pleasant things, and uh, a positive attitude. Well, I'll have to say that a Christian should have a good positive attitude, no doubt about that. But the thing that he imparts when he teaches is that uh, material gain is a good thing. It's not bad either. Material gain is not bad because we meet a lot of people in the Old Testament scriptures. Abraham, uh, Job, and, uh, and there are others that uh, have plenty of material gain. But that, that's not a bad thing. Their attitude toward those things is something altogether different. Yes. These people that preach for the day that look for earthly gain, I, I, I'll give you some statistics. This individual pays himself $54 million a year. Hmm. Wow. He's got a custom garage with 20 cars. Hmm. And he drives a Ferrari. And he lives in a house with 70,000 square feet. I'm sure he needs all of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just being sarcastic. No. But you know, to him, that's you know that's uh, the profits he's entitled to as a preacher. Mm -hmm. Could you picture Paul with that same kind of attitude? Well, I'll go ahead and read the rest of that particular piece of passage. This is Paul's attitude, and it should be ours. But but it's not to say that. Uh, that we can't have all these things, but it's the attitude toward them. He said, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we would carry nothing out. <clears throat> and having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. He follows right along with what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and those things will be added to you that, just to paraphrase the things that you need, because Jesus talks about adding to your stature and having all these things. Your, your aim should not be to have much material gain, Although if you have it, it's not wrong. As long as you have the right attitude. He, and Paul goes on to say, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, while some coveted after, they erred from the faith and pierced themselves, themselves through with many sorrows. We can look back on people that we've heard of in, in the news in years past that suffered such things. I don't need to mention their names either because we're all pretty aware of who they are. But the thing that we are to do as Christians is to Fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. And continuing in verse 11, it says, Be thou, O man of God, or but thou, O man of God, flee from these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called 
and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of the Lord Jesus, which in his time shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom it be power and our honor and power everlasting. Amen. And he goes on to say to just just to prove that being wealthy, and I I'm, I think of men like uh, Cornelius. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure he was pretty well off materially, <clears throat> but but he knew where true riches were. And Paul goes on to say, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches. And I start right there and say, look at Job. He had everything. Mm -hmm. And he lost it quickly. Yes. But he did not trust in that. He trusted in God. And he's a great story. He tells us a great story. I charge them that are rich in this world that be not high minded or trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us all things to enjoy richly. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to commu uh, communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Yes. Talks about the rich people. And of course, when we do what God wants us to do, follow <clears throat> his commandments, we are laying up for ourselves eternal life. That's something no man can take from us. Mm. And that we should be thinking upon that as our goal. <clears throat> if we somehow straight away and started to trust in worldly riches and have forgotten that, that God has given us a much greater gift than all the gold we might lay hold on to this earth. And that the one thing that we can have, those riches that we lay up in heaven, mm -hmm. by doing the works that God has wrought and, and told us to do, we should obey his commandments and follow his lead and all that we do. And, uh, and teach this to others as well by our example and by what we say. If anybody is straight from the gospel in some way, in a public manner, we, we urge you to take this time God has given you to to ask forgiveness to repent and turn to him. And if we see our life has started to go in the wrong direction, that we change that direction, that we repent. We urge you to come forward tonight and do whatever needs to be done to be accepted. And sing. Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me myself in me let the water and the blood from thy wound inside which flowed be of sin the double cure save from wrath and make me pure could my tears Zeal, no anger, no. These for 
sin could not atone, Thou must save and Thou alone. In my hand no price I bring, simply to Thy cross I cling. While I draw this fleeting breath, when good for us to be together tonight, uh, to think about heavenly things, to teach each other through these songs, and certainly hope it's been uh, an encouragement to you. I know it's been an encouragement to me. Um, <clears throat> just a couple of brief notes. Uh, we want to remember uh, Bill Hall, who fell and fractured his pelvis. He is in rehab now, as I understand, yes. so he is on the mend there, so just keep praying for him. And I believe we still have an address back there we for do. him if you'd like to write right. to him. Um, and uh, also, I understand that uh, Brother Jackie Richardson, who lives in the Russellville area, who is associated with the Rustic Youth Camp and everything, um, he, he's not doing well right now. And so just con continue to keep him in your prayers. Mm -hmm. And his wife, Bunny, uh, she's uh, suffering in, in those ways as well. Um, is there anything that I have missed or overlooked in uh, mentioning tonight? I know there are a number of things that were mentioned on Sunday. All right. Well, let's keep in mind our uh, study on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And we will uh, come back together then. And uh, until then, let's just keep working each day to strive to be part of God's kingdom. Ken, would you lead us in a prayer? Thank you, Lord, for this time we've had together, you know, singing to you and praising you and being just so blessed by you in our lives. We do want to, you know, you know, we, we do want forgiveness for our sins. We want to pursue you and, and hold on to you and be yours and mm -hmm. be in good grace and just want to, want to be there with you in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um.